I hate that I had to bust people out with a camera when I first see them. But it's kind of fun. Shelby from Seagrass is pulling up to take me all over the place today, so I'm super excited about that. Good morning. Can I can I get a uh, proverbial what's up fish tank people from our lady from Seagrass? What's up fish tank people? So pumped. We get to roll around today with the fine friends from Seagrest all over this wonderful place. Shelby is our tour guide. Like I said, I hate to bust her out with a camera right away, but she's picking me up chauffeur stop from this beautiful location over here. So, uh, let's go check out some stuff. What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's fish tanks bringing it to you. This is an exciting video for me, folks. I'm already wet. I got splashed on by a Paku, but I have to give a proper introduction by my friend Eric Cassiano. Did I have that right? Yes? Absolutely correct. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do and where I am right now. You are at the University of Florida's Tropical Aquaculture Lab located in Ruskin, Florida. This is what I'm looking at out the door. That's a, that's a fish pond. That's Shelby from Seagrass. Hi. Yes, this, this, that's, that's aggressive right there. That's, like that? that's our December. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. rough. It's, it's it's November 27th or 8th, I don't know, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, 20th. Yeah, right, yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah, so anyway, um, so what we do is, uh, University of Florida is a land-grant university. We do work for the people, and our people that we do work for are the Florida ornamental fish farmers. And uh, we have core areas of research in fish production, fish reproduction, uh, non-native species, and that's the greenhouse we're in right now, and fish health. This is one, I'm lab. in one iota of this, so they support the industry by people, like farmers can bring in sick fish, you guys Absolutely. do it at a, at a low cost, yeah. basically at cost diagnosis of what's going on with the fish. They're working on breeding, uh, too much to talk about, they're working yeah. on breeding uh, multiple different types of fish. Some I can show you, some I'm not even allowed to talk about. Uh, some for food. We are in the non-native labs. There's a ton, tons and tons and tons of videos coming from here, but um, give us the tour of in here. We are in the, I'm in the non-native, but I want to show this though. I'm in the non-native room. I've been frolicking around for a couple hours, by the way, by the way. So this is like greenhouse. I was in that one. I was in this one, that one, that one. I hope I'm getting that shot. Yeah, that one, that one, that one. Fish ponds, like, like, so I've been frolicking. So this is just like one quick section. So one of the, Give people just like the scope because we're going into one little small area. The non-native, bring it. Got some. I just like like walk in guppies. So. So a lot of you know, a lot of the species that are grown in the aquaculture industry are non-native species. They're from other areas. So we we do research to make sure, you know, what would happen if that species were to get out. What's the likelihood of that ever happening? And what's going to happen to the environment? Um, Really, a lot of it is preventing that from even happening. So we do a lot of non-escapement type of stuff, netting, uh, detention ponds. Um, but we do have examples. These are our demonstration tanks in this in, in, in this greenhouse. Most of what goes on in here. I'm gonna come behind is, you because I gotta get this clown knife here. Absolutely, it's temporary. So we have vats that look like riverbeds. Um, Can I grab, reach towards him, or not a lot of? Look at this guy. Did you guys to see this massive cool. clown knife. Can I stick my hand in there? Or? Oh yeah, uh, go ahead, why not? <laughs> I want to show the clown, think, the clown I, I knife think, is so fat. I think you should try to grab the swamp eel. The swamp eel? It's right here. I, I feel like that's a trick. <laughs> I'm gonna get this clown knife out here. So this is obviously a non-native species. These, yeah. are, I've, I know these are, oh, I love this. Look at that guy. Ah. I hate to harass him, but all right, I'm not gonna grab this one because this looks like it could hurt me. No, he actually won't hurt you. No? No, nah, he won't hurt you. You're, you're not, this is, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but he's just, this could be a good he's, joke on video if you're lying. super difficult to grab. He goes, he goes forwards and backwards. All right, well. Slippery and slimy. Let's try, what is this? A swamp eel. Not if you got the Zen touch. Oh, oh. beautiful. Wow. Oh, he's, being, he's being nice for you. This is a moment right here. I told you about that fish karma. Yeah, typically they, uh, they they slither in and out. They don't like it too much, but uh, you got the calm fish touch, I guess. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. Oh, dude, this has made my day. Oh, man. <laughs> that was cool. That's great. I, uh, the video's over. <laughs> That was great. No, please continue though. This is so wicked. Yeah. All right, now am I allowed to put my hand in this other pond after running? Or are they all the same system? I won't if not. These are all the same system. All right, so I can. Go ahead, yeah. 
I can we'll, molest the fish we'll, some more. We'll sterilize you before you go in. Oh, that's else, fine. Anyway. Um, so what are these bad boys? We have some blue tilapia in here. We have some black belt cichlids. We have Midas cichlids. Wow. We have some Mayans. These are just the representative of uh, that tilapia cichlid, cichlid complex. Um, this is really just a demonstration tank. Our Midas cichlids, they like to breed a lot, so we have some more Midas cichlids over here. Blue, some pleca. The Midas cichlids? Yeah, the gold ones. Are okay, nice. gotcha. Yeah. We have some jewel fish and some Jack Dempsey's. Um, Where's the Jack Dempsey? Am I, that these? Yeah, the that's a Jack. Ones, yeah. And then you see the red jewel fish over there. Oh yeah. And those can hang with these big guys? Yeah, yeah. They're Man, all, jewels are brutal. All very aggressive. Yeah, they're all very aggressive fish. So they like to hang out, have a good time. Got some plecos in here too. Wow, look at that. This, this is our fun tank. It's, a, it's just for demonstration purposes. There's a lot of the research that goes on in here. It's temporary, a lot of this predator prey interaction and doing like lower lethal temperature type of stuff. Okay. And then what is all, these are some of the temporary systems like I was saying. These are designed to look like a, a riverbed or the edge okay. of a pond or something. So this is where- I saw the gravel and I was wondering what that was for. This is where Dr. Uh, Dr. Hill or Dr. Tuckett would do predator prey interactions. Okay. The non-native species tent, it's so cool. It's not really stocked, right? No. Well, it's temporary, but, but we keep it running. Cool. All right. Swampy yeah, I Swampy will love me, man. Swampy will love. That's kind of. That's cool. it. Oh, I know, really. Yeah. They What's that? You could dig that swampy out. That'd be great. Look, yeah, well. So those eat fish. So yeah. The last thing you want is a bunch of swampy in the pond. <laughs> well, I think I had my moment. I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my resume on the side for anybody with that. So where to next? Uh, let's keep in house one. Let's do it. We can try. All right, Eric, I need you to bring it, man. We're outside this greenhouse here. I got nothing but love for greenhouses. By the way, I have a 12 by 24 in my backyard. Oh, that's cool, Because really? I'm, a, I'm a, yeah, not like this, but. Right. Um, so we're going into this special greenhouse right here. Please lead the way, because there's something fun going on in here. Yeah, so about a year ago, um, well, there's Mike, our farm manager. About a year ago. I'm gonna uh, get you we, close here, because. Uh, we were one of the first labs anywhere in the world. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anywhere in the world to have grown uh, the Pacific Blue Tang. Dory. Dory. Dory, for those not in the know. And where are they? That's so cool. These are not them. No, I know, but these are uh, these are one of my favorite, and I'm a freshwater guy, but these are one of my favorite saltwater fish. These are them here. These are one of the first ones we've Get out. Right here? Right here, and also- Captive bread? Captive bread. That's so awesome. And these guys right here. You got a net? These guys are the best ones right here. So what's up with these ones? So those are the, that's the second cohort that, that we've grown. So we grew them twice. And this is the second one that we've grown. They, they have a lot of head and lateral line erosion on them. Um, right now we have some up here that we're trying to grow up into broodstock. Okay. These are, all right, so what generation are these? These are captive bred. Oh, wow. This, these are actually the first ones that were ever grown in captivity. Um, now they look good. They're about a, yeah, they're about they, a year old. I think it was last May, so I guess they're about a year and a half now. They still got a little head thing going they're, on. They're, 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 yeah, they have a little head and lateral line erosion. We saw some of it on, on, on some of them. No, some had none, some had a lot. We really don't know what, why, or how. Um, oh, that was my next question to, was. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things we're gonna have to research and figure out. Um, but we were just excited to have done it at all. Yeah, um, dude. I mean, they're healthy. When did this happen? Uh, last May. Oh, this I read about this. That, that was the spawn, and they settled sometime in July, I believe. Congratulations, Thank man. You very much, That's man. really, really cool. So these guys are right on the verge of being sexually mature, so we're hoping to start getting spawns from them any day, which of course would be, you know, these are F1s. That's it. So be producing F2s and so that's so uh, cool the captive breeding reality has begun and is in full swing so we're very excited and um, we're hoping to get some viable spawns from these guys any day now what was your what was your reason for picking the uh hippo, hippo tang oh uh, yeah the hippo tang the pacific blue tang um i had that right right, right I'm, like, absolutely, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm weak in my saltwater games so i gotta check myself what was your reason for picking these guys so they were a part of, so we're a part of a group. A let's, group. let's walk and show some of this. I just want to see, I want, I, want, I want people to get the scope of what's going on here. Cause this isn't just one bat. This is like looking, looking around here. 
Man, this is a wicked greenhouse. <laughs> this is cool, yeah. We uh, specifically, we're, we're part of a larger group called the Rising Tide Conservation Initiative. Okay. Um, and the blue, the blue tangs were targeted as one of their species that they wanted to work on. Was there a reason for that? Because they're over, oh! You know, I think popularity had to, a lot to do with it. They're, Makes sense. You know, very popular fish. Helio, help, help me out. This is uh, Heniocus. Heniocus. Species or a schooling banner fish. Those are awesome, yeah, dude. My favorite fish. Um, Can we lift this uh, absolutely. net up? Absolutely. Yeah, dude. So one of the, These are so. One of the first rising tide. God, look at those. Fish. Yeah, they're cool, huh? One of the yeah. First rising tide projects. I haven't seen them this, looking this good in captivity. Oh, they look great. Those look fantastic. I'm cutting you off. What were you saying? In no, no, it's okay. So one of the first projects was collecting eggs that were spawned in public aquariums. Okay. And growing those eggs up to see what was spawning in the public aquarium. And one of them was Heniocus. Now we did not grow these. These are these are wild caught and brought in and, and broodstock. Um, we have not successfully grown any Heniocus species. We got them out for about 46 days and and they died. Mistake. Um, that's. But um, 46 Frank, days is not zero. Right, but Frank Bench out in Hawaii for Reef Culture Technologies has grown a Heniocca species. Nice. Cluster, so. Do you work with him? Um, he is a Rising Tide partner, I believe, yes. Okay. So, um, and, and a good friend, he's a good guy. Cool, so, let's, uh, I mean, I didn't know so what was behind to, door number two, so please yeah. please guide me around the... Let's see what's going on. I'll leave the, I'll leave the best ones for last. Please. Okay. Well, I can make it work. These are millet seed butterfly fish. Okay. We had a grad student. So these are, whoa. I got you. All right. Um, so we had a grad student working on these guys as well. Um, they were not, we did not successfully grow them. He worked on them. He got them out to 40 days. He completed his master's thesis. And then uh, recently, um, uh, one of the rising tide partners that was out in Hawaii, successfully grew the millet seed butterfly fish. So, um, you know, working in conjunction and working together um, is really working out very well. So, yeah. So we're really knocking out species, being a part of that larger group. That's awesome. So this species here, Halicori's crisis, or the yellow wrasse, you see them down there on the bottom. That's about as big as they get. Um, Liz Groover is one of our master students who has successfully grown now Halicori's Melanaris, which I'll show you um, some of the babies. This is another species that she's working on for her master. She hasn't successfully grown this one yet, but would be extremely popular in the trade. Oh, those are awesome. Yeah, they're really cool. And uh, yeah, when she comes back, I'll probably have her talk about it. Okay. Project. We'll run into her. Sure. That is pretty much it as far as the species that we have that we're working on. Can you uh, give a, a, a quick like filtration and just kind of husbandry of this? Because this is really, so, this is pretty elaborate and I'm kind of, sure. kind of you know, super jealous. So, <laughs> oh, it's pretty, it's pretty legit setup here. So if you can give me like the, sure. so this we're in a, we're in a greenhouse. Like what's the over structure here? Is there, you know. Anything I need to know about the actual greenhouse or just? Uh, it's a double layer greenhouse. We keep it in, inflated so that, you know, it's a... Uh, uh, Do you run temp way. controls on this at all? Like run it at a certain temperature? There's, yes, the water, the, we have a heater chiller that that cools and heats the water for the marine system. So you don't worry about the actual air, you just worry about the water. We do have an evaporative cooler back okay. in the back that will, that, will, that will cool it down in the summertime. During the wintertime, we also have propane that pumps in here somewhere there. Okay. Uh, so we have propane that, that'll, that'll heat the air. Gotcha. Uh, but we also have a heater chiller on the water. That okay, that was pretty, my... It pretty, keeps it pretty constant on the water as well. Uh, we have a moving bed reactor here. Okay. Which has some media in it, which is doing its biofiltration, converting ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate. Yeah, bring it, man. This is the good stuff. Uh, we also have a polygeyser bead filter. Um, the water percolates up through the, through the beads and flows into there. This is also doing biofiltration. It's collecting some flock as well. Okay. Um, flock that collects in the bottom, lift it up. Wow. It exits out the, That's cool. It exits out the bottom pipe there. Uh, we keep that on there just so algae doesn't grow in there. But keep the bacteria growing well. Uh, we have a uh, protein skimmer, which is injecting micro bubbles into the water. Okay. Those micro bubbles are getting out all the proteinaceous lipids from the food and the fish and stuff, and that sludge is getting collected and leaks into a pipe which also ends up going outside as well. Got it. 
Uh, I can show you some of that sludge in the bucket over there. Um, what else do we got here? They have a fluid ice sand bed, but I'll show you one of those over there. Is this running this whole row or this whole room? It's running the whole room. All 12 tanks are on a single biofiltration. A UV? So we have a double UV filter here. UV before it gets to the bacteria? Right. Is that right? Yep. The water flow? Okay. And then... Uh, We used to have a pro, uh, 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 algae scrubbers hanging down, which is essentially this screen material hanging all the way down here. Water would trickle down it, and algae would grow on it, macroalgae right. would grow on it. Take the, uh, the macroalgae off, scrub it off, put it back on uh, to try to get down some of the nitrates. Sure. We're also working on a sulfur reactor back there to, to reduce some of the nitrates as well. Um, Are nitrates a problem with this big a uh, setup? I was going to say, it looks so, like there's a lot of water volume for... So, you know, we don't really know. Uh, I mean, obviously, we know that ammonia and nitrite are toxic to fish. Right. And nitrate is tolerable, but does it really affect reproduction or ah. performance of the fish? We really don't know. This is the remnants of our old sulfur reactor, which is not running right now. It would be, you would see sulfur sort of fluid on Gotcha. Um, so we were working on multiple ways to remedy the nitrate situation. We do have some stuff left over. Um, oh, yeah, those are the uh, Halicorius melanaris grasses. The What's the little sand things in there? They I saw sleep them in the sand. Oh, cool. So they go in there at night. I saw that in the other rash thing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's the, the other ones. Those so are right. That's the two fish that she's working on. And I want to show this evaporative cooler because this is no joke. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, There's probably a better... We can go in one of the other greenhouses and get a better... Water runs through this. Water trickles down through it. And it's not running now. Right. Obviously. And then the two big fans in the front pull the air through that. And so it's basically just air coming across that water, which cools down the whole greenhouse. Wow. It works really well. Of course, it's not running now. Sure. It runs in the summertime. And then what are these big, the water up here? What's so that's, that's our mixing tanks for mixing salt water for our salt water systems. Wow. Those are no joke. Yeah. So we use instant ocean. Uh, we mix it up in here. It goes and settles in here whenever we need to replace some of the salt gotcha. water. Gotcha. Uh, the only other species we have is, uh, yeah, some blue tanks. And we have some flame hawk fish back there. Oh, nice. Yeah, those are one of my favorites. Um, we've got them to spawn a couple the times. Flame, the flame, flame angel or the, uh, the little ones that sit? Oh, yeah, I love those fish, fish, man. They got the little dark eye. This is why they pay me the big bucks. I don't know what's behind this door. Kind of. Observe. <sighs> Hello. Hi. Kentucky boy doesn't see this every day. Sorry, I'm, I'm soaking it in. Eric. Yes, dear. Can you, can you give me a, I'm kind of an, I'm kind of awestruck. Right? I'm kind of awestruck right now because I was on a plane All right. last night. So please as, tell me. So this is our experimental fish farm, what you're looking at. I think we got about 40, <laughs> 40 ponds, six and a half acres. Uh, we purchased this. This is coming out of here. Yeah, this is our detention pond. Walk here. with me up here, Charles. Yeah, sure. So this is our detention pond. This is one of the methods that we use to keep non-natives from reaching the ditch or going off site. Okay. They have to run the gamut of bluegill and native bass species. And Wait, this is the gauntlet pond? This is the gauntlet pond. So, so like anything has to come, this is the final like exit? Yeah. Is I hearing that right? So uh, the water moves through the facility. There's actually a, a ditch that comes from the empties right in here. Okay. And it, if, if a non-native gets into that ditch, it has to run the gauntlet through all these native species. Which so these are native. These are native Florida species, and they and you know these big colorful fish don't make it. You see the size of our bluegill. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm walking out here. They're jumping in my face. Yeah. That's awesome. They just feed them. And this is pretty typical. Yeah. It's a. Um, yeah, oh we wow. Just, yeah, we, we feed them as, yeah, as well. So. And that's mostly bluegill. There are some bass there as well. So this is the the final the final stop. You're not getting, the buck stops here. Yeah, you're not getting through this. That's cool. You're not getting through this into the, that's, and that's part of some of the work you guys do is to keep, keep retention, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Well, I'm gonna soak this in and then we'll do a little tour. This is great. Yeah, it's cool, man. And it sucks being in Florida, you know, after Thanksgiving, let me tell you. Eric, how are you aerating these? Or what, what is, is that aeration? What is that? It is, it's, a, it's mixing and it's aeration. So um, 
there's a very porous tube that we're pumping air to that foams it up and, and the direction, we've walled off three sides and we've directed it to shoot out this way and so it starts to mix the pond, it draws water up. So you intentionally did off three sides so it would shoot one direction instead of just in the center? Right, so it moves the water a little bit and starts the mixing so we don't have settling of, of water on the bottom. Uh, stratification for what, from you know, different water on the top and the bottom. That's so. cool. And it also aerates it as well. So. So it's doing two things. I got plenty more of that place to show you, including how they're using Paku as a food fish, as well as what some of the students do to get an aquaculture degree. I've also got uh, Eureka Springs Farm, one of the original locations of the first fish farms in Florida, as well as a fabulous interview across from Mr. Elwin Seagrest, founder of Seagrest Farm. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe, make it an awesome week, and tank on it, buddy. Later.